It's Coffee with Christy. And Tim. You know, the funny thing is, is especially with, with my 11-year-old, he like hangs on every word when I do read aloud. So we went from Island of the Blue Dolphins, and oh. we just did Charlotte's Web, oh. and then now we just finished with, right? <laughs> Where the red fern grows. Oh, and read the Scarlet Ibis next. Oh gosh, I know. In every read aloud, I'm gonna be he's crying like all day long. hanging on. Mom, read another chapter. Mom, don't stop. Don't stop. What happens next? Like he's taking it in, and he loves these stories. But then we go to the bookstore, and he's getting Dog Man <laughs> and Diary of a Wimpy Kid and all these things. And I'm like, why don't you get? You know, you really enjoy these books of substance. These books that are really telling a story of, you know, the human spirit and inspirational. You love those books. Why are you, <laughs> when I tell you to choose a book, why are you getting dog man and <laughs> underpants man and whatever, you know, those books are? And so it's just a different mindset, mm -hmm. I guess, when you're being read to aloud. Yeah, I mean, that is, if, if we're going to talk about things that we miss about teaching, I definitely miss being in a room full of kids while they're sitting there and you're reading a book to them and you're kind of creating part of who they're going to become because I I remember that when I was a kid my teachers reading me certain books that I fell in love with that it just kind of changed my outlook on life or whatever and you don't get to do that as you move up from a teacher to an administrator or just retiring like in your case you know you don't have the interaction with the kids anymore yeah that's not, that's definitely the thing I would miss the most um, just the fact that you're talking with them, conversing with them, you're understanding them, seeing what excites them and interests them and in the whole shebang and that kind of process. And so for me, obviously, teaching at the high school and the middle school level, it wasn't like we were reading books, obviously, since I was dealing with world history or debate topics or whatever. But this, the fact that you're sitting around the table, so to speak, and just, to, just the fact that the kids have written their first draft of their affirmative case or whatever, and now we're going to begin to pick it apart and do all that kind of stuff, just the give and take. Mm -hmm. And the process of seeing them become their own strong learner advocate for themselves. I think that's what I miss the most. The fact that what I was able to witness, especially at the age that I was teaching, kids who were most of my career was ninth graders through twelfth graders, and how a boy comes into the high school as a freshman, and how mm -hmm. that young man leaves as yeah. a senior, and the same thing for young women. It's just to see that growth and to be able to have been a person who taught across the grade level, mm -hmm. since my classes were elective, speech, debate, drama, that kind of thing, and even some social studies classes, to see their growth and their change over time and become this person who's going to go out into the real world now and who knows right. the amazing things they're going to do, that that's just the phenomenal yeah. part of that And at your, at, when you were at that stage, they're like adults. Yes. They're going from like children <laughs> to like going into like graduating high school and exactly. like being an adult. And they're, they're, they're advocating for themselves. Yeah. Hopefully they're beginning to take charge of who they want to be and where they want to go and what mm -hmm. they want to do. And that's just a phenomenal thing to see. Yeah. So that, that I miss. I don't yeah. miss the bell schedule. You know something I do <laughs> miss though and that people will probably be shocked by this. I actually miss writing lesson plans and grading papers. I know that sounds weird, especially like teachers that might be listening now and they're like, what? <laughs> grading <laughs> papers? Cause you know, I used to sit there like, and you obviously with as many kids, you know, I was elementary, so I only had 25 papers to grade um, in all the different subjects. But I loved like grading papers and little like inspirational things about how they did and little smiley faces and buying stickers, you know, to put on their papers and making lesson plans. I loved making lesson plans. Is that weird? No, I don't think that's weird because I always enjoyed that organizational part yeah. of it too. I mean, I don't understand why we're teaching if we don't really like, in yeah. essence, creating lesson plans and then evaluating the work that we've done. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, Love that. I hadn't thought about missing it, but I did mm -hmm. really, really love that process, especially that process of evaluation, because that's when you're able to see growth, yeah. which is just the best thing in the world, just the coolest thing. But yeah, I missed I that. did love putting lesson plans together and, and, it was, and it's organizing fun. time. Yeah. And, and, and then the, the satisfaction of it went well or the, oops, well, I guess that wasn't exactly what I mm -hmm. thought it was going to be, but that's okay. We'll modify. Yeah. We'll do whatever. Just that whole like give and take of self-evaluation as well. That mm -hmm. is something. Yeah. Well, and now it's funny because, you know, since I'm homeschooling, I'll, I have a lesson plan book. And I, so I can kind of still like live vicariously through the kids. And, you know, even if it's one or two kids, I'm like writing detailed lesson plans <laughs> and, you know, got my coffee and making lesson plans. And I just, I really, I really miss that. And so it was, you know, and being a part of like with the parents, the parents coming in and just the relationships. The relationships is the biggest thing, yeah. whether it's with parents or kids or your fellow faculty. The fact that you're just going into a space 
where everybody seems committed to something important and something bigger than themselves, mm -hmm. and they're all working towards specific goals, that's really, really cool. I feel we do that in what I do at Educate.today, but it's a different kind of world because you're not in the same building and you, you know, you're not next door to the yeah. same. You can't just dash across the hallway and then and someone else all of a sudden, oh my gosh, Tim, that really happened mm -hmm. in your class and blah, 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 and that kind of cool camaraderie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about the teacher's lounge? Well, I... I, <laughs> I miss them donuts. <laughs> Always, there well, was now, okay. always snacks in the teacher's lounge. There are things I'll miss and things I won't miss. I'll age myself. <laughs> I will never miss the smoke-filled environment of the teacher's lounge. Okay? Ooh, that so is that old. Tells you, that tells you Ooh. when I started teaching. But, like, when I began teaching in 1979, yes, you could still smoke in the teacher's lounge. Wow. Teachers, there were some teachers who smoked in their classroom, not during class, <laughs> but would smoke in their classroom, you know, like yeah. before or after school and that kind of thing. You're like... Thank goodness that has changed significantly. So I, I don't miss that in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I miss that teacher's lounge because I would go in there and there was always like people were always bringing in snacks and your friends would be in there. And yeah, so just that camaraderie of just hanging out in the teacher's lounge. And it was like the secret place, right? It's so <laughs> funny because when I graduated uh, college, I started substitute teaching in one of the areas in which I went to high school. So now I was a sub in the high school that I attended, and even walking into that building as a sub, I was scared to go in the teacher's lounge as an adult. Because I'm like, mm-mm. No, no, like, no. like, no, why don't you go in the teacher's lounge? It's your, it's your break. And I'm like, I can't go in there. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's sacred. a no-no. That's right. That's sacred ground. And they're like, no, you can go in now. You're grown up. You're actually working here as a substitute teacher. So it is sacred ground. It is. And it's interesting that you say that because kids would tentatively they knock. They would knock. And you like open it and look and be like, can I help you? And then you're like, no, she's not here. Like, close the door. <laughs> close the door. And <laughs> They're all so tentative, so meek about it. I was looking for Mrs. Schultz. Oh, she's not here right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they walk away or whatever. Yeah. It was kind of like that was territory that you didn't mm -hmm. enter with that appropriate. Yeah. And they're like trying to look in the crack to be like, what's going on in there? <laughs> what do you think is going through kids' minds about what they think happens in the teacher's lounge? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know. But trust me, it's not nearly as exciting as they may it's think. It's really, truly not. <laughs> it's so, truly not. You know, Children, you're missing nothing. Absolutely nothing.